speaker for today is a graduate of Singapore Bible College. He is currently a volunteer discipleship pastor at United Evangelical Church of the Philippines. He is the board chairman of NDM Philippines and country director of TNET Philippines. He is happily married and blessed with one child. Let's now welcome our speaker, Pastor Leo Jaime San, to preach God's message entitled, Looking Beyond. Praise God for the opportunity to share God's word on this uh, uh, New Year morning. And it brings me all memories when I met with Ayose in his house. And then see, I have been uh, attending when he was counselor and speaker. And being with you today is uh, such a, 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 a nostalgic moment for me. As we start the new year, I wonder what is in your mind. You're still hanging on to your vacation mode the past week, or you're looking already forward for what is ahead. You know, I chose this topic because Christians also have the tendency to be short-sighted in life as we live for Christ. Um, when we say we're nearsighted, the bayong eyeglass natin is nearsighted. We only see what's in front of us, but the things that are far away, we are uh, blurred. No, kaya we need uh, prescription glasses. But to be short-sighted as a Christian, it means that we are so concerned with the matters of today that we fail to see the ultimate purpose of Christ and why He has called us to where we are. No, so Christians can be nearsighted, no, yung mga naka-eyeglass dito, but we can't be short-sighted. And what we need to really, aside from looking beyond, is to look beneath. Okay, so that we can look beyond. I'll explain that later. So we know that as followers of Jesus, we are to be a thermostat and not a Thermometer. Ang thermometer, they measure the temperature of the place. That's it. If it's 36 degrees, that's it. But the thermostat identifies the change in temperature and he makes sure it is cold enough or warm enough. Ganun po dapat tayo when we are in the world. Right? We set the pace. We influence people for Jesus, we do not follow the motions of the world. We are supposed to be to make a difference, to make disciples, to change, to be a blessing to nations. Right? We cannot sit on the sidelines because we see that people around us need Jesus. So we need to learn to live, live, L-E-A-V-E, our comfort zone. Right? To be hidden, to be comfortable, to be unnoticed. And we really need for this season to stand out, stand up, and really be a thermostat for Jesus. And it only matters that we are willing. Right? Because if Jesus really said, I came to give you life and give you life to the full, what does that really mean or look like? If it is just to be comfortable where we are, what we have, no, okay na, and not to really make an impact in the world, not to make our mark as followers of Jesus in the world we live in, then what a pity that will be. Right? So, sabi I believe, yes, we have faced so many global challenges because of the pandemic. And it will never go back to the way things are, right? We need to learn to move forward, make do. But our calling as disciples of Christ never changed, right? And the disciples and the church have faced so many challenges in history. And yet the church thrives because people know how to look beneath, right? How to look Beneath. With this quick changing world we have and the challenges that we face, we have to keep in mind we are on a mission, right? And being on a mission, it's like we need to really find 
the right anchor, right? An anchor of our faith. Okay, we, we, what we're singing about the Word, but also the Word of God, our Savior, Jesus. You know, an anchor for a ship is a matter of life and death. Right? But usually, it is something unnoticed. No? People don't see the anchor. It's not displayed in front. Okay, it's on the back or the side, hidden away. Right? But it will be noticed when there's disaster. When you are close to shipwreck, when there are big rocks, they start looking for the anchor. Right? If you're a captain of a ship or an owner of a ship, you will make sure you have an anchor on board. But if you're just a recreational boater taking a boat ride alongside, it's never your problem because you're just taking a ride. But the captain knows how critical an anchor is. And an anchor is useless if it's not holding on to the right rope or chain. Right? Kung manipis at napuputol, useless. And it also has to be the right length. If it's not long enough, it might capsize the ship instead because of the heavy anchor, right? It has to be the right length and the right strength. Now, when the anchor is properly used, it can prevent the boat from capsizing or running adrift on a rocky shore or drifting into the sea during a storm or hitting huge rocks and damaging the engine of the ship. It can save people from shipwreck. No, so, ganun din po ang Kristiyano. Our anchor ought to be in Jesus and Jesus alone. No, we all have a, a security blank carry around. Okay, what's our security blanket? It's the thing that gives you confidence in life to be who you are. Right? So, what is your security blanket? Is it your eloquence? Okay, you can speak well. Is it your talents and ability? Is it your worldly possessions? Is it your connections? What is our security blanket? Can we really say that Jesus is our, truly our anchor or security blanket? Now, if you look at Paul's declaration in the passage we're reading, his confidence is not in his own heritage or legacy as a Jew or a Pharisee. He had no confidence in the flesh or the worldly achievements, but rather in God who is and what Christ did. Okay, sorry ah, nakalimutan ko na. Pag na, na, na ano kasi ako, nakakarried away ako, na wawala ako sa, int- ano eh. Okay, sige, let's go. Okay, thank you. Now, it is not with earthly things that we receive the forgiveness of sins. It is not with earthly things that we have newness of life. It is only in Jesus it is only in what he did on the cross, who he is. So first and foremost, to be anchored in Christ, we have to learn what it means to be surrendered and devoted to Christ. What does that mean? Let's read this passage together. But, together out loud. But, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. All that Paul had, everything, his accolades, recognition, possessions, everything that he has achieved so far, he count them as rubbish in comparison to knowing Jesus. Right? He is willing to keep losing things as long as he gains 
Christ. So Paul was not talking about surrender. Paul was talking about complete and total surrender to his master and Lord. Right? To be committed half of the time is easy. To be surrendered maybe 95% of the time is not enough. When Jesus wants people to follow him, it's 100% faith and commitment. Now, F.B. Mayer was preaching in England in 1904. Di pa tayo most of us. And he described his moment of surrender to Jesus in this way. He said, F.B. Mayer, I remember so well when he came to my heart and challenged me as to the keys of my fortress or castle. No? Before I gave them to him, I put one small key in my pocket. Have not you done that and handed to him the bunch of keys minus one small key? But he gave all the keys back and he said he could not king at all if he could not is not king of all or everything. And so, he said, I put my hand in my pocket where I have hidden that one small key and said, I cannot give it, Lord, but you can take it. And he did take that one tiny key. He looked with me with those eyes with a flame of fire and said, are these all the keys. I said, oh, but this. And I cannot give it. But I'm willing for you to take it. And he took it at that. And once they were all his. Right? So, Jesus must have all the keys to our life. Holding back nothing. Complete surrender. Whatever gain I had, I count as loss in comparison to knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Now, so we come to reflect. It's January 1. And the question is, is he currently the most important relationship in your life? How do you know? You know, are you constantly drawing closer to Christ in the Word and prayer? Is He your utmost concern in your conversations and actions in your family and in your daily life? Can you really say the world and all it offers pale in comparison to knowing Jesus? Or are we constantly distracted? Right? And so, to be anchored in Christ, we need to surrender. But the good thing is, He can take those keys. We are not ready to give up. We just not need to be willing to let them take them. Second is, to be anchored in Christ, we are to be justified in Christ and sanctified in Christ. But that's already uh, done. That's already done. And so this is what Paul says in the passage. Not, let's read out loud together, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. You know, we I uh, read this booklet from the Navigators before. Ang title po is No Cross, No Crown. Right? And if you read that title just like that, it could probably mean two things. Okay? One is no discipline, no reward, no hard work, no fruit. Probably that's kasi no cross, no crown. No that's hard discipline equals reward. But it can also mean another thing. No, Jesus. We are nothing. No cross. No crown. Christ reaches at our expense. And that is the reality. We have 
Jesus. And the cross really did happen. And we can be secure in whose we are. Right? Jesus. So at the foot of the cross of Christ, all we need to do is recognize we need Jesus. Right? We need Jesus. Right? His forgiveness, His love, His sacrifice, and of course, His gift of righteousness. Right? That's, you are justified in Christ and sanctified or made perfect in Christ. Kaya lang, not easy, easily said and done because we are in the already but not yet scenario, right? In Christ, in positionally, we are made righteous, but we still continue Okay, to become more and more Christ-like from glory to glory in our worldly journey. James Brian Smith, author of the book Good and Beautiful God, no, said that we have a tendency to be in a, what we call a performance trap. Despite knowing we are undeserving, we have this you know, mindset that I have to prove I'm worthy of Christ. I have to, you know, prove to Christ I'm worthy, right? And so we end up doing the performance trap, you know, doing for the sake of being accepted instead of we are accepted, so that is why we do what we do. So that gives us, puts us to another question. Are we fully dependent on Christ's work on the cross that is done already for us? Right? If we are, we are justified in Christ. Are we, do we really fully understand what it means that He already laid down His life for our sins? Right? Or are we still tempted to make ourselves deserving? No, kasi nga, kailangan we surrender to Christ. We stand in Christ in His justification and sanctification. And finally, we would like to really be victorious and glorious along with Him. Let's read together that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and share His sufferings, becoming like Christ in His death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection of the dead. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection, that daily experience of victory. Right? Not awaiting for the resurrection of our bodies, but experiencing victory daily already in the present time. Becoming like Him in His death and attain the resurrection of the dead. No? He's not talking about being deserving for the final hour to be raised from the dead. It's about daily living as if the final hour has already come and Christ has returned. No? Two men were given parachutes. The first man was given this big heavy parachute and he was told to, you know, uh, bring this parachute along the ride. Right? So throughout the ride, he was so uncomfortable because the, the airplane seat is really small, the parachute is really big, you know, and he's, you know, he's so uneasy and it was a long ride, his back was aching, and people were looking at him, what is this man doing? And, you know, he's just totally lost what he's doing with the parachute. But the other man was told a different thing. He said, please wear this parachute because at any moment, the captain might ask us to jump out from uh, uh, no, 200 feet above the sky. So despite it is uncomfortable, he perseveres. He holds on to it for a dear life and he endures the ride without feeling tired. Okay, that's what it means okay, to be on our toes for Jesus because at any time, he will return to live in victory daily. Not away, looking forward for that day as if it were to come tomorrow. Ganun po, right? Okay, but is Jesus the source of victory over the challenges in your life? No, siya ba yung una nating run to? Do we really see, okay, as I'm facing these challenges at work, 
that I will claim victory in Jesus because Jesus' purpose for me is this and this. Or are we worried, sick, and feeling lost and always, you know, feeling defeated? But we should not be because Jesus is on our side and so is the victory he gives to those who put their faith in him. Now, so are we changing continually in our character and priorities to be more Christ-like? But first, we look beyond. To look beyond, we need to look beneath. Right? Are we fully anchored in Christ in all things? Then if we really have Christ as the anchor, we can ship out and go beyond. Okay? And that goes to our second part, which is how do we live to be alive in Christ? Our identity in Christ is not supposed to be known. It has to be lived out consistently as a child of God, you know, as a servant of God, as an ambassador of Christ. It is as an identity we walk and boldly live out in this world. Because whose we are must determine who we are. If we are in Christ and we are his people, therefore we have to be more like our king and master. Kaya in discipleship, sabi nga, it's just two things. Or Christ-likeness, becoming Christ-like, that's discipleship. But in what? In his character. Right? Act and do what Jesus would do. And in his priorities. No? Character and priorities. More and more like Christ every single day. Now, how do we do that? First and foremost, teka, sige, nagabalik tayo yung slide, pero okay, I'll just go back to that slide. To be alive in Christ, to live out your Christian identity must be a daily pursuit. You wake up every day asking God to help you to step closer to the, stand, the, ano, the ideal of being like Christ. Now, that's why this is the passage, no, sabi niya, not that I have already obtained this. Now, none of us can brag that we are like Christ or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ has made me his own. You know, to live out that victorious life empowered by Christ as a daily pursuit and because Christ has made me his own. Because I am, I belong to him. I want to be more like him. And I go back to that uh, first picture, you know, the Australian coat of arms. Uh, a coat of arms is a symbol of a, a family or a heritage and sometimes a nation. So the Australian coat of arms, they chose two animals. Dalawang animal. One is a, not an ostrich, it's a smaller version. It's an emu. Emu. Diba nakakabili mga girls ng emu oil? That's from that bird. Right? It's a flightless bird just like the ostrich. It runs around with big wings but it cannot really take flight. It's an emu. And then, another, more popular to us is the kangaroo, which is a big version of a wallaby. Alam niyo, dalawang klase, yung maliit sa kamalaking version. The kangaroo is the big version. So they chose the big version, the kangaroo, and the small version of the ostrich, the emu, as their coat of arms. And what attracted them to these two animals is simply this. These two animals can only go forward. They cannot move backward. Because the kangaroo's heavy tail is in the way and helps it balance. It cannot jump back. No, it has to keep jumping forward only. If it has to go U-turn, kailangan niya mag-U-turn buo katawan. Because if it jumps back, it will fall off. That's the kangaroo. And the emu is the same way. Its three-footed leg makes it only jump forward or run forward very fast but it cannot go backward because it will trip itself on its back toe. No? And so, they chose this to be a nation that always moves forward and never backward. Right? We may fail 
in moments to honor Christ, but we, you know, stop looking backward. We keep moving forward, pursuing Christ, right? So at the beginning of our relationship with Jesus, we turned on all the keys, the path, the ba? And ask Jesus to get in the car and take the driver's seat and we sit beside him. No, and we close the deal when we transfer the deeds of the car to Jesus already, the deeds of our life, once and for all. But despite we are no longer our own, we like to steal the key and take a ride <laughs> from time to time to take on the driver's seat and again be the captain of our ship. So whether we like it or not, it takes a daily choice to give Jesus the key and let him take the driver's wheel. Brother ba yung sikat na kanta ni Carrie Underwood, Jesus, take the wheel. Surrendering the driver's seat back to Jesus. And this is our journey with Jesus. Right? A daily challenge that we need to do. An elderly teacher with a pupil beside him took a walk to a, through a forest. He stopped and pointed at four plants at close. The first was just above the ground. The second had rooted itself well into the earth. The third was a small shrub already, so that's even deeper root. And the third one is a full-sized tree. So the tutor told his young companion to pull off the first plant because he's proud pa lang siya. He just used his fingers and the boy succeeded. Sabi niya, pull up the second. And that young person obeyed, but it's a little more difficult because some roots need to break off. And on the, with the third plant, of course, he need to pull it with both hands with his own strength. Right? To uproot it. And now said the teacher, little boy, do the fourth one, the full grown plant. And he put his arms around the trunk of that tree and he could not shake it so much. Right? And the lesson is different from what we expect. Sabi niya, my son, this is what happens when you continue living out bad habits. <laughs> positive <laughs> bad habits when you were young it's easy to change when you were old it's hard to change right it's hard to uproot and we pray struggle yeah and so that's a challenge sometimes we have some things that only God can uproot and but we have to be willing to let him uproot those bad habits and tendencies so that we can obey Christ. Now, so ano ba yung mga bagay na nagbabawas ng time natin with the Lord and in the ministry? What is hindering us from being bold witnesses? Is it our fear, shyness? What are those things that need to be removed? No? Sabi natin, Jesus, being alive in Christ is a daily pursuit, but is living for Jesus our main pursuit in life now already? Okay, parang ano yan eh. Uh, first, a disciple, then a businessman. First, a disciple, then a student. First, a disciple, then a son. First, always a Christian representative of Christ before anything else. Right? That's making Jesus our life pursuit. It's not replacing everything and removing everything no, and becoming a pastor. Right? Kailangan namin ng members. <laughs> the more the better, right? We, we are not all called to, do, to serve the Lord full-time, but we have to be full-time committed to God in whatever path He leads us, right? First, a follower of Jesus, then a doctor or a lawyer, okay? And are there things that occupy the center of our life? No? So these are called idols, and idols are supposed to be burned and thrown away. And that's not easy. No? And uh, lalo na ngayon, no? During the, the ano, pandemic, right? Our addictions rise up because we're always at home. 
<laughs> no? So what are those things that need some, you know, unproductive things in our life that need surrendering? Now, not only is it a daily choice, but we need to make that consistent choice of checking out. No? Check it out, check it out. So we all we de- win daily. We choose Jesus every day. Kaya, ito po yung sabi ni Paul, together, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead. We can see here that Paul is saying he is a work in progress. But his highest pursuit is to follow Jesus. Forgetting what lies behind, straining on to what lies ahead. Victories and failures, leave them behind. Jesus pursue. Focus on that. Learning from our past failures and pursuing Christ's victory and purpose. That's how it is. As the song says, no turning back. No turning back. Had Thomas Edison been not a man of faith, perseverance and determination you know maka nakagaslight pa tayo lahat today right because that's how lights were no so i remember in camping no we were so happy using the gas light but imagine if that's life every day no uh, it have been many years before the first electric light was created and it was reported that thomas edison this is his picture Right? He failed over 6,000 times before perfecting the first ever electric light bulb. 6,000 failures before one light bulb. And every worldwide, we need those lights. Of course, upgraded na no? to fluorescent, to pin light, to LED. But no? imagine. So one young journalist challenged Thomas Edison once, saying, Mr. Edison, why do you keep trying to make light by using electricity when you already failed so many times? Now, don't you know that gas lights are here to stay? And this uh, young man received Edison's reply. He said, young man, don't you realize I have not failed but have successfully discovered 6,000 ways it won't work. <laughs> no? Talagang tenacity and determination. And so that is also the attitude we must bear to make that consistent choice. Dead to self, a life to Christ must be a daily decision. Yeah. Dead to self, a life to Christ. Dead to my sinful nature, alive to the leading of the Spirit. And then are there distractions and hindrances that make it difficult to choose Christ? No? And uh, my life verse, Luke 9.23. If any man would come after me, he must deny himself daily. Put up his cross and follow me. I choose the Luke version because of the word daily. The other versions, well, I word the daily. If any man would come after me, he must deny himself daily pick up his uh, and follow right and so that is a challenge and last point it has we have to realize that we have this upward call from Jesus himself ano sabi niya I press on toward the goal for the price of that upward call in Christ Jesus now, such a uh, uh, heartwarming, prestigious line. What I'm pursuing is an upward call. It's a promotion. It's a better life. Right? Because some Christians are afraid of being a Christian or living out the Christian life because it feels like it's a hard life. It is a hard life, but it is a better life. Right? It's, it's like when you are given a job diba? Of your from your boss. You need to do the job because the boss says so. But it's different if something is not just your job, it's your vocation. Right? I'm a medical doctor. Right? 
for example. So, that's my vocation. No? I want to bring healing to this world. No? I am a Christian, not a job. It's who I am. No? A job or a vocation. No? So, are we living a life worthy of the calling we have received? That high calling that we are children of God, beloved of God, servants of the Most High King, called to make disciples of all nations, right? Is this what we are pursuing? And using all our resources, our vocation, our businesses, you know, our connections for this purpose. And can we succeed? Yes, because Jesus said so, right? You will do greater things than me, sabi niya sa disciples niya. And indeed, we have seen Christianity flourish all over the world all those years since 2,000 years ago and we are in our season to bring it to the end no? so our organization our DNET trains pastors in discipleship church planting and our motto is to finish the great commission in every country finish the great commission so we help churches and then we train pastors and church leaders And the ultimate goal is saturate the community with the gospel and with disciple makers, it with church plants. Now that's the idea here. I love this story to close. Ayun, so, dalawa yun, no? Look beneath. What are my life anchors? And should I reconsider these as I look beyond? Alive in Christ. look beyond, but to be alive in Christ. And I'd like to end with this illustration uh, from many years back that I really love. It's entitled, Pushing Against the Rock. This man of God was given a difficult task. His task was to push against the rock with all his might, which was in front of his house. It was a big boulder there in front of his house, and his job was to push against that rock. And so being a devoted, committed follower of Christ that he is, no, he pushed with all his might without asking why. Right? He pushed and pushed and pushed. And days became years. And years became decades. Right? And he was pushing against the rock In his heart, through those times, had times of ano, uh, regret and doubt. Why am I doing this? I have been pushing with all my might. And yet the rock didn't even move an inch. But that was what my master told me to do. So he pushed and pushed with all his might. And so at that moment of ano, sadness, he inquired of the Lord finally. Lord, I love you, I believe you, and I have obeyed you. I keep pushing and pushing against this big rock for, with all my might for many years, but it didn't even move an inch. Did I waste my life away? Did I fail you? Did I understand what you asked me to do? So, of course, he understood the instructions, but He didn't understand the heart of God behind those instructions. Sabi niya, look at yourself. What you are now. Pushing with all your strength has formed your body to be muscular, strong, and healthy. And you have this one focused determination to, to, to do. You have changed into the person I would like you to be. No? That soul determination that strength that you have, that character of patience that took days, months, years, decades to form is ready. So because you have been faithful all these years, let me move the rock for you. New story. And then God moves the rock. Right? And it's a picture of what it means to trust Christ. No? The results are His. But he didn't say, sit and wait. His instructions are clear. 
di ba? Follow me. And I will make you fishers. Right? We follow Him faithfully. We obey His word. We draw close to Him. The disciples of Christ making disciples for Jesus. And all there is comes from Him. And uh, another life verse, Galatians 6, 9. I am crucified with Christ. But I no longer live. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. No? Total surrender, complete faith to pursue the upward call of Christ. This 2023. Looking beyond. No? And looking beneath. Looking beneath, make sure that you're anchored in Christ. Looking beyond, no? pursue a life that honors Christ. Not only this year, but continually for the rest of our life. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, as we gather this morning from the words of Paul the Apostle, we saw also the passion of Christ. A passion to love to know Christ in such a profound way that it impacts who we are, knowing whose we are, and affecting uh, the fibers of our being up to the things we do, say, and live out. We pray that each person here listening will be willingly surrendering keys of our life continually to the Lordship of Christ. And as a result, we would open up opportunities for the gospel, opportunities for lives to be transformed through us one at a time. And that we will see, Lord, uh, us as a congregation and as a church grow into Christ's likeness and Christ's So help us, O oh Lord, as we reflect today, January 1, with a, a, a deep sense of uh, appreciation for what you have done for us, that we will not feel defeated, but instead we will see the opportunities for victory that you're opening for us as we understand these profound truths in your word. So help us, O oh God, to be anchored in Christ. If we are not, Lord, then we willingly surrender those keys. Help us to really be rooted in you, in your word, in your truth fully. And not only that, allow those words to transform us from the inside out so that we can also be agents of transformation around us. So Lord, we pray for you to grow us and uh, ship us out for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray.